And we return to our top story this evening. A new study out of Singapore will spotlight the crucial role women in tech play across Southeast Asia and encourage more women to pursue and thrive in tech careers. Well, uh, let's dive deeper into this uh, topic with our guest today. We have Queenie Lei. Uh, she's head of business IT solutions at Grab. And we also have assistant professor Iris Yu. She's a STEM researcher working on green chemistry at the NUS College of Design and Engineering. Well, a warm welcome to the show, ladies. Well, I'm just going to kickstart with you first, uh, Ms. Lei. So um, you are in the tech field, which is all moving in the direction of AI. And, um, you know, in, in, in the field of AI, it's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing. Um, I think we would like to know what sparked your passion to want to be in this field? I think um, it's about experimental. Uh, experimental. And when I started off in tech, uh, it's really by accident. Mm. So um, at the time when I started it's just because there is a role for me and I, I would like to seize that opportunity. And I know that, you know, it is, it's something that I really want to do because, um, because of the, 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 the ideas of innovations, the idea of creating something new with technology. Back in those days, this is something not, uh, not regular. So all the women are either doing finance, HR in that space. But then I think this is something that, you know, is going to grow in an innovation space that I would really like to explore. That is how we start, I started off. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you before we get to just a, a quick follow-up on that. Miss Lee, uh, when you say you started by accident, I take it it was in Singapore. No, it, I, was, I started off in Malaysia, oh, then Malaysia, I moved on to okay, Singapore, right. yes. Okay, uh, well, this question then, you can, you can expand it to Malaysia if you like. Now, Singapore, the average of women in tech is at 40%. Global average is 28%. I don't know about Malaysia's average, and I apologise for that. No worries. But do you think... Uh, I take it you're working in Singapore now. Yes. Are we doing, well, we're cl clearly doing better than the global average. What are we doing right? I think we are definitely doing very well, but I'm sure there's more to do, right? And what we have done well is really we have um, do a lot of promotions around how tech can um, be, be um, I mean, it, it's something that you can already promote since young. So what we have done well is really uh, bringing in the campaign to the younger children, to the campus, and also uh, being, the, being a nation of digital, uh, being a digital nation. I think this is something we have done very well to encourage our young people to explore and open up their career opportunity in this, uh, in this industry and this space. All right. Uh, digital, of course, one of the, those, the really happening areas. Um, Doctor, you are working in green chemistry. That's another, I think, very happening area. And a STEM research, and a quick reminder, we keep saying STEM and we don't say what it is. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. How does green chemistry differ from chemistry as we know it? Well, uh, I think green chemistry, we place uh, more emphasis on how to make a chemical process more sustainable and uh, um, to, to make the process uh, with less environmental impacts. So I think it's a set of ideas, it's a set of philosophy, and uh, we have always have this um, uh, idea in mind that oh, we need to protect our environment, we need to reduce um, the pollutants that are being generated from the process. So um, to me, it's the spirit. Hmm. Well, I, I guess it's this spirit you have that makes you one of the rising stars in this particular um, industry, green industry, really interesting. Uh, it is somewhat niche and somewhat new-ish, would you say? And I'm thinking, are you seeing more women perhaps, you know, daring themselves and, and, and taking on this kind of role that, uh, that you do? Uh, yes, I, I do see that there is um, a great interest uh, of the girls, of the uh, female students um, in STEM in general, not only green chemistry, but engineering uh, in a broad sense. Um, and also speaking of digitalization, right? Uh, our department, for example, we offered a specialization in digitalization of urban infrastructure. And the students, they are very interested in that. They are very keen to learn about um, data visualization and about so, coding. Sorry to cut in here because yes. we're talking about women inside. So when you students are very keen, do you see women at the start more keen and as time goes on, rather less keen? 
Which as the time goes on, yeah. uh, I think they're just growing their interest. I, I think that is um, at the first, at first, um, they may not be that confident. So I think girls sometimes they tend to be more humble. Sometimes way too humble. So to in the fact, point that, policy yeah. can help keep uh, that interest alive. Policies can help, and also we um, as adults can also help encourage our young generation. Mm. And, and you know, uh, Ms. Lei, you, you've mentioned that it was an accidental uh, a, a thing discovery. for you. Discovery. Yeah, mm. discovery for you when you actually got into this um, industry. And you've mentioned that Singapore has done a fair bit. But in terms of the education side, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, Professor here talked about how um, women still need, right, to be encouraged and still to, to know that, you know, these are to be innovative and that, you know, we're just as good as, 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 as the boys or the men. So what do you think, what, what more? Can Singapore, is it the education, what more can we do to inspire this next generation of women to be like you both? I think this is a natural question that we should ask ourselves to build our own confidence as a woman, regardless of what age we are. And I think uh, very importantly, we have to build a supportive ecosystem. So community, we are able to mentor, we are able to lead by example. When I'm talking about we as we women, right? And we eat technology or non-technology. I think this is something that we want to create that kind of environment, that kind of um, also opportunity to our young generation. So the, the, the opportunity for them is really to be um, having the, the kind of community for them to reach out to us, to also learn from us that we can mentor them to open up their space and their, their mental mind that, you know, tech is not as difficult. It's not something uh, rocket science. So I think this is something is a, is a very uh, stereotype kind of uh, thinking that mm -hmm. technology is very tough. It's only for the boys. You know, it's not for the, uh, you know, the women or the girls. So I think if we can break this boundary, and I think more importantly is the parental itself. Yeah, I was going to say, it starts from right. young, right? Yeah, and, and what your young. parents say to you, what the surrounding people say to yes. you, uh, really matters a lot, right? Forms that impression. Exactly, and oh. gender equality as well, right? So I think breaking these uh, boundaries, uh, this question to both of you, we'll start with uh, Ms. Lay first, followed by Dr. Yu. Uh, glass ceilings in, because you work, I suppose, you, in the tech industry, right, in business. So it's not just science, it's science in applications, science used in managing people. What are the glass ceilings there? First yourself. So, um, if I get your question right, right? The glass ceiling you meant is something like, you know, what is the limit that we can touch, right? Mm. So is there one? There is no limit. So, as long as you have the confidence, you have the passion, but experiment. But the very fact that you've got 40% or 28% women participation, when women make up maybe 50% of the, the population, suggests there is a limit to women's participation, what would that limit be in the industry? I think there is still a lot of stereotype uh, in, in, our, in our society and we need to break that stereotype thinking. And Doctor, you were talking about the spirit you have in green chemistry. Spirit in practice, what are the glass ceilings that you see in academia for women in science? Um, so far, I don't see any solid glass ceiling. I can see that we are a field of our senior professors um, who are female scientists, very famous in the world, and they are in the top management now. So I think there's always an opportunity for women to, to become top management, to become the leaders. Mm. Sounds like Singapore is a good place to be in, to pursue right. that. Uh, right. Mm. And we need to influence our neighbours <laughs> as well. <laughs> Sounds good. And... Uh, that. And uh, I guess time to wrap up this interview because we're running out of time. Um, thank you both uh, for your time and thoughts. That was uh, Queenie Lay, Head of Business IT Solutions at Grab and Assistant Professor RSU, STEM researcher from NUS.